The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk, is urging Sudan's warring parties to immediately de-escalate the violence in and around Al-Fashir city in northern Darfur, which has killed dozens of civilians. Lisa Schlein reports from Geneva. At least 43 people, including women and children, reportedly have been killed in fighting in the Sudanese city of El Fasher since April 14th. That was when the paramilitary rapid support forces began its push to gain control of the only city in Darfur still in the hands of the rival Sudanese armed forces. United Nations Human Rights Chief Volker Turk is expressing alarm at the escalating fighting and calls for an end to the conflict, which has ravaged the country for more than a year. Speaking from the Kenyan capital, Nairobi, his spokesperson, Saif Magango, warns the battle in El Fasher may be taking a turn for the worse. Reports indicate that both parties have launched indiscriminate attacks using explosive weapons with wide area effects such as motor shells and rockets fired, rockets fired from fighter jets in residential districts. Since early April, the RSF has conducted several large-scale attacks on villages in western al mostly inhabited by the African Zagawa ethnic community. Magongo says several Zagawa villages have been burnt down. This, he says, raises the specter of further ethnically motivated violence in Darfur, including mass killings. He says civilians trapped in al Fasher are afraid they will be killed if they try to flee the city, home to two million people and half a million internally displaced people. This dire situation is compounded by a severe shortage of essential supplies, as deliveries of commercial goods and humanitarian aid have been heavily constrained by the fighting, and delivery trucks are unable to freely transit through RSF-controlled territory. High Commissioner Turk is urging both parties to the conflict and their allies to grant civilians safe passage to other areas and allow safe and unhindered humanitarian aid to reach civilians in dire need. He also is calling on the warring parties to negotiate an end to Sudan's year-long conflict, which UN agencies say has left more than 18 million people facing a acute food insecurity, and displaced nearly 9 million people. The RSF has not responded to BOA's repeated requests for comment on allegations about the fighting at El Fasher. Lisa Schlein for VOA News, Geneva. Burkina Faso has temporarily suspended the programs of Voice of America and BBC Africa, following the broadcast of news stories about a Human Rights Watch report accusing the Burkina B Army of abuses against civilian populations. The Superior Council of Communication Thursday ordered the immediate halt of the rebroadcasts and suspension of the programs of both international radio stations for two weeks. Access to the websites and digital platforms of BBC, VOA and Human Rights Watch was also suspended within Burkina Faso. In its story on the Human Rights Watch report, VOA sought reactions from several Burkina B officials but did not receive any response. VOA will be issuing a statement in response to the Burkina Faso government's action. Military-ruled Burkina Faso has, in recent months, suspended other Western news outlets. A decision by the U.S. government to ban the Chinese-owned TikTok unless it is sold within a year would not change the U.S. relations with China, the U.S. Secretary for Commerce. Gina Raimondo said in Nairobi on Thursday in an exclusive interview. Rain Mondo, who visited China in August 2023, said the decision will also not impact negatively with her allies as countries such as Kenya are likely to follow suit. The USA does a lot of trade with China and we want to continue to do business with China, said Raimondo, who is on her first official visit to Africa since her swelling in in 2021 as the 40th U.S. Secretary of Commerce. 
But for the technology like artificial intelligence and the connective apps, we have to be very careful. It's about national security and protecting Americans. So we tread where we can, but we have to protect our people. A potential U.S. ban against TikTok took a major step towards becoming reality last week as House lawmakers approved a hot button bill targeting the app as a part of a wide-ranging aid package for Israel and Ukraine. President Biden on Wednesday signed a bill into law that would ban Chinese-owned TikTok unless it is sold within a year. The bipartisan vote of 360 to 58 marks the latest defeat for TikTok in Washington as a as embattled social media company with 170 million U.S. users fight for survival under its current ownership by ByteDance, its Chinese parent company. It is the most serious threat yet to the video streaming app's future in the U.S. intensifying America's tech war with China. The reason that Congress voted to ban TikTok is because of our national security concerns because everyone who uses tiktok tiktok collects a lot of data from you said raymondo who visited china last year they know what you like to look at they know exactly where you are and all that data goes back to the chinese government and maybe the chinese military state controlled so that is the reason the U.S. decision comes at a time when Kenya, too, has joined a growing list of nations seeking to regulate TikTok in a bid to combat false information, fraud, and distribution of sexual content. Last week, Kenya's ICT Principal Secretary John Tanul told Parliament during the committee meeting that TikTok will be required to publish compliance reports every three months as part of the plan to address the negative effects linked to TikTok instead of banning it from the country. The government under pressure to reign in TikTok says that the social media platform will now be required to show content taken down and reasons for the same.